was Playboy at its finest. It was all there, the swankitude and the suave, the real gone adults getting juiced in a world unpainted by the savage beat of rock and roll. These cats ruled the roost. Their clubhouse was well stocked with liquor, sounds, and swinging doll babies. And man, it was some kind of scene. Playboy's penthouse debuted in October of 1959, and it was, at least for then, the far out zenith of Hugh Hefner's crazy ambition. The show began with an Aurora City escape. We were flying over Chicago with the sizzle of Cy Coleman's original theme music, only to land soft as kittens in an elevator, Hugh Hefner's elevator, which whisks us up to his pad, and here he is, a man of the hour, signature pipe in hand, and barely able to contain his glee. Hello, I'm Hugh Hefner. The editor and publisher of Playboy magazine. Won't you come in? Heff brushes by a bevy of bunnies so he can introduce the piano player. And holy motherfucking shit, it's Cy fucking Coleman himself. He's comping away on an upright in the middle of the room. You know, as if he lived for nothing else to play the piano at his friend's cocktail parties. And he's playing witchcraft. This little thing he wrote for his friend, Frank Sinatra. And then Mac and Cole swings by. Mac and Cole, and he is so fucking cool, he can smoke a cigarette and make it look fucking healthy. And all of this is very groovy. And you know, normal if you happen to live in the Playboy penthouse. But here's where it gets weird. At some point during this very genteel, very liberal, and I mean really swinging affair. Heffendale's kind of a floating cooking station. The kitchen of the future. This special little gadget he coos replaces the hi-fi. But really, it replaces the kitchen. Because all it needs is a couple of women to start working the built-in waffle iron. And this is when I realized that Hugh Hefner hates women. And I mean he really fucking hates them. His contempt is palpable. He simply does not see them as created equal by God. Whom Hef doesn't believe in anyway, but still. I mean, for all the sophistication he promoted as a noble purpose of our time high on earth, when it comes down to his worldview, it could have been painted on a cave wall or the door in the clubhouse of the little rascal seaman woman haters club. Son. Now, other men will come along and splatter pictures of naked women across the pages of their magazines in every possible light, from a dick tingling glow reserved for the greatest sirens of the age, photographed by Bob Cuccioni for Penthouse magazine, to the unapologetic but undeniably erotic haze of crass seduction perpetrated hustler by Larry Flint. And they will unwind miles of lurid, unambiguously pornographic chrome to the abject disgust of Lord Swass of the female population. But only you after will chirp like a spoiled child at a birthday party while he does it. Now for a while there. For a while there, I was really enjoying all that rat pack glamour. The retro cool. Hell, up to that point, I wish I could have been at that party. And there's nothing really sleazy about Hef's style. In fact, he's the model of charming. Everyone is relaxed. And the chauvinism, hardly extreme. But thinking about it, thinking about it a little more deeply, all I can see is that somehow these playmates managed to escape the confines of the kitchen, so Hef decides to bring the kitchen back to them. And boy, oh boy, is he ever fucking pleased with himself. Now, I have to admit, I was a little bit stoned while I was watching this, and it opened up the secret hip chakra of my brain. The secret hip chakra of my brain. The preposterous gender politics of this whole crazy scene, and I just felt kind of dirty, dirty, dirty. 
and it struck me. There is no humility to this Hefner cat. But hey man, it's his gig. He invented Playboy, and so what if he can be a bit of a cad? I'm not so politically correct as a little 1950 style shoulders and pop my top. But this guy's attitude is reviling. He made it cool to be a nerd, but didn't anyone notice when the nerd became a bully? Hef was one confused kitten. I don't want my editors marrying anyone and getting a lot of foolish notions in their head about togetherness, home, family, and all that jazz he wants bristled. Daddy-o! It's fine to clang against that conformity, but I'm with the rational phobia of suburban death. I wouldn't last five seconds in the plastic fantastic. As far as the urban bachelor goes, I can dig it, baby, because I am it. But to put down love and companionship, that is some seriously dark shit. I'm going to tell you right now. This part of my story is going to end pathetically with Hugh Hefner cast as a creepy cartoon parody of himself on a tepid reality show wearing the same tire old pajamas and paying his place with an intellectual challenge surgically enhanced girlfriends two grand a week to make believe in front of the cameras and babysit him on sex nights while they take turns fucking him while he gobbles Viagra and watches gay porn to keep his dick hard. It breaks my heart just thinking about it.